Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, as normal, the first item on the agenda then is apologies for absence. Um, the, well, the only apologies I've had is, had is Councillor Hutton. Yes, because the electric car's broken down. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted that on the record. Um, okay, so happy to accept the apology? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Right, declarations of interest? Is there anything in the, the agenda? No. Anything comes up, I'm sure you'll declare it just before that item comes up. Thank you. Uh, representations from interested parties? Don't seem to have any this evening. No, okay then. And uh, consideration of requests from those interested parties, well, they're not here, so we can get them. Right. Minutes of the previous meeting then. So, for those of you that were here, have you had a chance to read them? Any problems with them? No? Okay, well there's no problems there. The proposer? I will propose them then. And the second one? I can't remember who's. Oh, no. Um, um, we're talking about finance yes, and general purposes. Yes, we are. Yes. Ah, any of uh, The first one is the uh, personnel one. Yeah, that's what I thought. Is that a year ago? Is that a year ago? Yeah. Oh, personnel, yeah. Oh, I'll second it. Uh, I think it might not be. Gary, even though it says so. Yeah. 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 Just one moment. I'll just one oh, moment. I must say, I can vote. Did anybody vote? Just then. No, no, no we, we were just going back to just a correction on who, who was actually here. Personnel oh, committee Hutt and Sparks, Cheshire, uh, Ch Cheshire, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Humphreys, myself, um, and N Oaks. Well, while I wasn't there, could I observe that the meeting was held on the 11th of September 2019, not 18? No, it was 18. Was it? It was 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right. It's just that I knew I was aware of what it was. It was 2019. I thought that's why I gave apologies. I haven't proposed our under second then. It's been proposed and I've said Yes, I've done it. Yeah. Right, okay, then all in favour. Right. Okay. That's a year ago. Can you remember that? I thought I was going to start off fairly straight on this meeting, but uh, back, in, back into the confusion. Are you yeah. all right? Yeah. Sorry, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, it's... Uh, we accept your apologies, Tony. Thank you. I've been cancelled. Yes, it was the one of Christmas. Mm -hmm. so I hesitated on the date then. Get the right year on yeah. it. Yes. Right, so now we're, we've moved into this year, so the Finance and General Purposes meeting held on the 9th of July. I oppose it. Just a, a proposal and a seconder then, so all in favour that we're here. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've done nice here. Can I just... Point out sure. that I'm down as present yeah. and absent. Sorry, I meant to say I've amended that. I've, I've, this afternoon, I noticed you were down. <laughs> yeah. Absent and here. halfway through, I is the balance sheet. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm 
was that much deep down the only thing really that stood out was, you might be able to say this, the losses of the hub. Yep. Yeah. Which are uh, running on, a, on, a, on an annual basis of 24,000. And that doesn't include electricity costs. It doesn't include what can be wasted. If you include those, it's probably near a 30. Mm. So and that's without any space costs. So um, it's an issue. Um, the two reasons, I think, anyway, two major reasons. One is that we haven't achieved the sales, the 9,000 down the sales. Yep. That's a big one. I don't know why that is. And also, as I said before, I think staffing costs are too high. Yep. So, in terms of uh, you know, taking personal interest in this, as you're well aware, um, you know, then we've probably today we have one of the. Uh, the, the, the well, uh, so we're down to three members of staff. Yeah. I just no need right. to check that we were allowed to talk about it. Yeah. Yep. So, one of the members of staff will, will be leaving and we will, will not be replaced. Okay. So that's the, the beginning of it. We, um, I participated in a sit-down review with, uh, with the staff down there, mm -hmm. Emma and Rebecca, and we looked, we started on you know, bit by bit. So the first thing is two hours off the, uh, the working day on uh, Saturday, well, because you know, we're looking at, you know, there's a, a club meeting there, but they don't purchase a lot of things during that two hours. So instead of three o'clock finish, one o'clock finish. I think the other one is lunchtime. You've got three people in there and they're not stretched. Yeah. It's probably boring for them, quite frankly. Well, yeah, and just on that, it's already been addressed. It will okay. only be uh, two. And what Emma has also agreed to is that in times of, of heavy load, we look at the staff from here going to, to help out. Oh, well, that's very good idea. Yeah. So we're looking at more flexibility. But the, the, what it's going to be now is you know, a weekly meeting. And a weekly review of what we're going on. Mm. So the other thing that they're looking at there and done a good job on is uh, the stock control mm. and yeah. the amount of, of the inventory that they've got. Have you got any idea why sales are falling? Uh, well, the, the competition is the, the, the basic thing. You know, new uh, new um, cafe opened at the garden centre. You know, so people will will move around. Yeah, very busy, and there's well, yeah. But it's, so come here, I'm going to go all the way over the ground. Well, the, the, I, I think they are. That's yeah. the problem. You know, people will agree to meet somewhere. And you know, there's only so many yeah. cups of coffee in Anvil people will buy. So we're not generating more no, than that. No, so no. what I wanted to do... I really is, that. Yeah. So you, know, you, know, you can't generate a lot more business without robbing it off somebody else. You know, now we're going to have to make sure that the, the uh, proposition that we put forward to people is good. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it is venue wise, you know, what I'm encouraging them to do down there is we're not chasing people out when they're not buying coffee. Mm. You know, first off, the facility there, which is the hub, yes. you know, will always be a community facility. Yeah. You know, but uh, we want to, we just want to make people get in the habit of coming and then they will buy. I'm so the staff there were very nice and very helpful. So yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the very good suit too. I'm <laughs> sure they know that. But you know, certainly that they, I, I was quite impressed, you know, with the, you know, the, way, the way she was looking at offering, you know, and changing the offering, you know, saying that, you know, we've done this, we want to try something else. Okay. The only thing Claire, is that Claire was very good at putting it on the internet, I don't know where we are with that. But Rebecca's doing loads on that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you, you know, what I'm going to do is to keep on this week by week. Approach with it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we even today we we're even looking right down at everything that we buy mm. to then look for cheaper suppliers. You know, even if we're just shaving off small mm. amounts, just yeah. to try. And... Okay. And I think one of the the, the, the knock-on effects of that is once you get somebody into the frame of mind, yeah, you know, that cost and cost management is important, then it just breeds a little bit of enthusiasm to the topic. Mm -hmm. you know, well, sure I, think so, I think if you can, if they can see they're actually getting somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it is. Still with them. We're looking at we're looking at you know, various places. Sainsbury's have let us down quite badly. You know, so mm -hmm. quite often they put it in orders for Sainsbury's and they only partially fulfil the order. Mm -hmm. And then we have to go down to Waitrose at the last minute. Yeah. 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 That's only because fortunately I mean, we made some small supply of beer. That's the problem. Are we not a, a bookers card? Or? We yeah we um and we have breaks as well but um it, they're not dying in those huge quantities but we are we are looking at um at wherever we can get our is supplies it, from cheaper places is it worth having them a one person or two people say 
once a week go to Alan? Well, I think at the moment, we just manage it on this, we're going to change things. But what you don't want to do, obviously, is put in more cost of driving to Aldi yeah. or somewhere else yeah, because you'll, yeah. you'll eat up your, your property. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Sainsbury's against Aldi, if you're spending yeah. £50 yeah. at Sainsbury's, you'll only spend £30 at Aldi. Yeah, sure. They're not yeah. just purchasing from Sainsbury's, are no. they? No, no, no it's for us different places. Yeah. But it, you know, that, that's why I'm, I'm happy with this now. We've got every week, we'll go through it and we'll look at an in initiative and feedback, initiative feedback. But the main, major one, I think, uh, Councillor Glenn, as you point out, is that one of Labour. Yes. Yeah, the, yeah. The, that, that's the, the hardest one to achieve. And so what are you saving by losing one member of staff? Mm. Can't, can't. can't comment on that at the minute. It's that it's, she's only gone, going this week, she's actually leaving tomorrow. I, I, personally, I, I think, wouldn't imagine it being much more than ten no. percent, maybe twenty. Right. Yeah. So it's not a lot. No. no, but it's it's the le we know from from when we've done the studies in the past that you've got a direct relationship between uh, labour costs and, and uh, profitability. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the food costs. You know, uh, you know, yes, they make a contribution, but labour is the big one. Mm -hmm. So when we've had periods in the past where we couldn't get the stuff, the profits have been tremendous. Yeah, so we, we, we're moving in the right direction with this. Well, and then that's the other thing. Cutting those hours down as well, you know, so a study of which hours are not bringing the footfall. And you're going to upset some people in that. Because, you know, as soon as I suggest, you know, bringing it down from 4 o'clock to finish to 3 o'clock to finish, I'm in there at 3.30 and the, th the place is packed out. You know, so it's, it's, it, is, it is difficult, but we've yeah, got to start making those decisions. I think it's attention, you know, attention to detail. Yes. Lots, lots of little exactly. cuts or lots of little yeah. savings will add up to That's something. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Something good. Okay. Anything else for, from these that is no, worthy of discussion no. at the moment? No longer than that west. Oh, right. That, how long did that take to close down? Uh, that's supposed to be a year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> good bank, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it keeps its customers. <laughs> All right, that's good news anyway. It's tidied up anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're getting there now. Yeah. One of the advantages of being Mary is you don't have to sign any checks, isn't it? <laughs> no. I say, don't change that rule at the moment. That's all right. Uh, right, anything else then? Do we need to approve them? Yeah, I think they're just, just receiving them here and approve them next week. The next one, I was a little bit concerned or, con concerned or confused about the, uh, the grant from the Anvil Cricket Club because we did talk about this um, uh, just a few a couple of weeks back, didn't we? Well, this is the third time. Yeah, so I, th I thought that they were going back um, to do some more consideration. But, uh, did I get that wrong? Well, we actually said that, uh, uh, that we wouldn't actually support this until the new year, the new financial year. Well, I if think actually, to be slightly more actually, no. what I thought we decided was that we needed advice from our finance officer as to where exactly we were with the grant budget. Ah, okay. um, and as the finance officer is here, doubtless we can now find out exactly where we are. Thank you. Okay. I think you already have a list of all of the grants. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how much is left in the budget this year? How much haven't, haven't we spent so far? Uh, currently spent 8,900 out of so look at 16,000. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so it's uh, 7,100 left over. Yeah. Yeah. So there is 7,100 left. Right. Uh, and then I know, I know that because Terry and I went through this, didn't we? That it's actually not 7,900 anymore, it's about 4,000. Well, well, because there was one grant that was done, but actually hadn't been recorded yet. Do you remember that term? Uh, I think it was the football club. I know what did it? Mm. Yeah. Which one, sorry? The football club. Oh, right. I think it wasn't recorded. <coughs> That's right. Because the football the club football should have been paid out on that. The football money at the minute. No, because if you remember, we, we agreed that we would purchase so that we could pay the VAT back. Right. Um, so at the moment they've only purchased one set of. Oh, so maybe that, uh, that, that that's why it's not showing yeah. up on the grants yeah. thing. Then. But so it we, obviously yeah. is earmarked because they, you know, we approved. That's yeah. three, three, eight. Three, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So that's going to come off for seven thousand. Well, we've spent some. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Is this still right. sort of like three thousand pound down? No, no. There's only it's probably only about a thousand. So probably only about a thousand, thousand left for them to spend. Which is right, yeah. okay. Yeah. So that's six thousand pounds there. That we've got remaining, yeah. Yeah. Right. I know uh, Councillor Humphreys, you had a, a, a word with um, Jason, didn't you? I did. I did. About I had a word cheaper, with Jason um, and cheaper machine. Having made some, we've done some research and I went to the, the town school to the ground and asked them what, what uh, machine they used. And they said, from what they actually use at the cricket ground, they provided me with a with the information on one that would suit them. Yes. Which was only two thousand one hundred pounds, right. brand new. Mm -hmm. I sent that. I gave that to J information to Jason. Um, Jason gave it to the chair, who came straight back saying, um, in fact, that the one that I showed them was a domestic scab fire. Um, and, it, and what they wanted was a real, you know, uh, a Lord's cricket ground of Starleys. Uh, and so I went straight back to Alan School, to the grounds department, and I said, can I have it absolutely on? And they said, well, no, the one we showed you is the one we use, and we've yeah. run five wickets yeah. throughout yeah. the cricket season on that. Yeah. The one they want is way over the over top. The top. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was... I took that information on board and said I would pass it on to this committee. My other point is that I, I feel, and this is not, I, I have a great admiration for, for cricket and, and for the cricket realm and everything they do for the town, but when I can see that they have vehicles that are sponsored by local businesses for their cricket team and coaches, and then they come to the council to ask for taxpayers' money to fund equipment that they should my mind that we already have, I, I feel it's a little bit ingenuous of them, personally. Mm. And then, but that's just my personal <laughs> But uh, they have been supplied with, with information, yeah. but they seem to be not interested. Okay. In so, any, bit, any other input on this one? Uh, when did we last give them any money? We've got it down as 2016. 15. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. They wanted us uh, to contribute 4,500 out of 7,400, but they didn't have a route through for the rest of the money. They said they've only got a vision of 1,500. So, you know, they, they were a thousand pounds short of the, the cost anyway. But I think the bigger one is the, the, uh, the, the issue that Council Humphreys has put, uh, put up. What they're asking for, you know, is, is you know, more than is required, you know, to keep the pitch alive, you know, and therefore, you know, I think we 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 listen better to a discussion about a more realistic piece of plant rather than one that they've asked for. But well, that's personal, and, and you know, it's over to the rest of the room to say what we do with this re re request. I would actually, I would probably agree with Councillor because we should tell them that we're not prepared to go up the amount that we could buy a machine for two thousand one hundred pounds. Because I don't see the point in giving them that amount of money. If Animal School do five wickets with that machine, mm -hmm. there's not going to be a lot along with it because they're not going to buy something that's going to last them five minutes. No. And we're only talking about one wicket here. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I would then say, okay, that's 2,100. You've already got 1,000 pounds. You've already said you've got 1,000 pounds. 1,500 they've got. 1,500. Well, we have the 600. Oh, okay. I really don't think we should sort of stretch that far on this at the moment, at this moment in time. Okay, so we have one proposition now. Well, I think, it, yes, it's more, it's a bigger sum than we normally think of in terms of, of supporting, you know, yes. it's a higher level yes. of support in a way, yes. isn't it? Yes. To buy a major piece of equipment costing yes. this kind of sum. Hmm. And, well, and if, it, if it was, you know, sort of like key to the, the, the survival and so on, that we might review it differently. But, you know, as, as we've seen here, there's other ways of doing it, yeah, which are 
yeah, we, we, I've never seen anything such a big difference in, in prices than a third of the price for a new piece of kit. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at what we have to do now to, to get our equipment, we look around to find the best value, don't we? Yeah. Which is really what all organisations should be doing now. No, no. I'm just wondering just for the record that I, it sounds like we're being fairly negative about it, but I think we've just been realistic with it on budget. Yeah. And we do, I just want it on record, but we do support the support them. I certainly support them. But I think they should, um, as you said, as well, the members of the council have said, look around, be slightly more flexible in their approach. I tend to agree with you. I think you know it's, in, it's important. I do support the cricket club, and in fact, I mean you know I know this is not the, the uh, right way, but I mean one of the reasons that we've got one of the sites in the neighbourhood plan is because they were going to give us a cricket pitch, and they were going to give us two cricket pitches. The hmm. Alnwick um, Golf uh, Cricket Club decided they wanted one. Okay. So how would we like to handle this? We have two choices, I think. One is either to reject the, the proposal as it is at the moment, and the other one is to end a counter-proposal. Yeah, and the counter-proposal, I think, is what uh, Councillor Peel put forward there. Um, my only worry with a counter-proposal is if it's nowhere near enough. Yeah. We do, we're just handing money that they're just going to either sit on for a while because they've got to raise more money. So I almost think we should go back and explain. Well, I, think, I was just going to say, given the discussion we've had, can we not go back to them and say that we've made our own inquiries, we've ascertained that the potential cost of an appropriate bit of kit is X, mm. we understand that they may have already have Y, mm. if they're prepared to go ahead and buy the kit at that price, or indicate that they would be willing to do so, then we would be willing to make a grant to make up the short well, If we put it to them in those terms, yeah. if they then want to go for a different yeah. bit of kit, they don't get our support as things stand at the moment. If they yeah. go for a piece of kit yeah. within the budget we've set, we'll provide them a sort of match funding. It's not quite match funding, but I, I think what I, what I like about it. Well, what we pay up to, because I think we ought to be fair. Well, to we pay, 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 we're paying the difference between £1,500 and 2100 yeah. yeah. I mean, so if they came back and said, there's one at 2,300. It may be that we then go, yeah. go that little bit extra. But at the moment, based on those figures, I think that's the, the approach to take. Yeah. So that, that, just for clarity, that 2,100, was that with the VAT or without it? Uh, uh, it was on that piece of paper. I had yeah, so it's most likely to be without VAT. Um, so, yeah, it? I think the, the range, the price range was uh, 2,100 to 2,300. Yeah, plus VAT. Plus VAT. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if it was so really exactly what we did with the <coughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was the kit and the kit and gone from the manufacturer as I sat there. They went straight on the computer, printed it off, gave it to me, which I gave, then gave it to Justin. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I don't know if you're close enough to that proposal. Well, I'm close enough, but it yeah. would be good to have the actual figures of whatever that piece of equipment and what it was so that I can then say this is. Yeah, I'll have um, to wait on that because I'll have to go back to the school. Is that okay? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I can yeah. Not until next week. Oh, that's right. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. And just on the VAT bit, you know, just the, yeah, you know, I'm a little bit worried about us becoming a broker for everybody. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah. maybe on this occasion we say, you know, it's for them to buy it. You know, and therefore we put a cap of a thousand pounds on the council's contribution. Right yeah. So we'll pay whatever they've got, you know, up to a thousand pounds. Yeah, so they've got fifteen hundred pounds in their own budget. Yes. And we will make the difference between fifteen hundred pounds and the purchase price, but cap it at a thousand pounds. So if you can do that one Ella. Yeah. Yeah. So can I propose that? Yeah, I'll and I will second that. And all those in favour? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that with you? Well, I, I, I don't think we should go to a thousand pounds, to be honest. Yeah, we're very engaged. I'm, I'm, I'm staying. All right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Right.
Which of the one we were not doing today? Um, yeah, the next yeah. one, um, as you will see, I sent you out information about oh, so oats. The twinning on the agenda. By that on the slightly. agenda, yeah. but the twinning one, which you had approved at the other meeting. So yeah. I think if you're okay for me to put that on the next full council yeah. agenda, well, the just so that we, because they have waited for quite some time, um, rather than waiting till the next finance meeting, then I will do that. Didn't we say that we were actually giving them some, but not all? But there isn't a figure on here, this one. I don't know. Well, it's in the paperwork, but. Um, the, the twinning one, we have, you, you sorted yeah. out at yeah. the full council meeting, um, but it's just my error on the agenda. Well, we did say we weren't going to support that, didn't we? I don't show more diversity. No, you said you would support it this year. You paid the grant this year, and then, really? then yes. yeah. yeah. Mm. We did. Okay, so the the oats one was eighteen hundred pounds. Yeah, you, so you said we're waiting until yeah, two weeks. Yeah, it, it's not it, the agenda's wrong, so we can't really discuss yeah. it tonight. Yeah. No. Uh, so okay. if you're happy, I'll put it on the full council agenda. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. All right. Right, and to review the amended grants policy. Although I've read it, I, I wasn't clever enough to get the uh, the, the, the changes in it. So. Um, this this was. At the last finance meeting. The last finance meeting, we decided we had to look at it again. Yep. And I kind of volunteered myself to do it. So <coughs> we've got in the pack a copy of the current policy and then the old one. Copy yep. of what is in effect an expanded version of that policy. Right. Um, So in terms of the fundamental changes, what, what, what sort of things have we added in there? Um, it's been a while since I did it, I'll have to <laughs> 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 do refresh my memory. Uh, certainly I can see that under general principles there seems to be quite a lot more which is included uh, than was said before. Um, we noticed that instead of being three points, it's now page and a half. Um, I think we had more things about um, looking at what uh, organisations had in their reserves because I think we've had a few issues where we've had grant applications yes. and, and they've had lots in their reserves. What we've done is to try and work out the criteria we were in effect applying anyway yes. and actually try and write them down because it, made, it makes it easier for us and it actually makes it easier for people who are applying because they can look at that. Yep. They can then make sure that their grant applications provide the information that mm. this seeks, which might avoid us ending up with having to reconsider applications two or three times and ask people to turn up to speak to us. So I suppose that's the greatest difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it just spells it out in rather more detail. It's not vastly different. No, as I read it, I thought the document looked very good and it reflected some of the difficult conversations we've had in here yes, about so why, right. why we feel about that one and the other. You know, if we take as an example of that, the one with the football team, and they talked about 200 families in Amber that were using the, the, the football uh, facilities. And that's in here. Mm. You know, and this is the sort of thing we are considering. Yes, and, and, yeah, exactly that point, you know, so we, that's why that was a difficult dis uh, dis discussion that we had. Okay. It's very comprehensive to me, I need a quick read. Yeah. So I, go I, think, I think the draft is good. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. We have to do something, so... Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to propose this and go through awesome. it. Don't, I do it, I do it, I apologise, I didn't know. I don't think take the words out of my mouth, I have read it, I, I think it's fine. Okay, so since Councillor Stagg was there first, he, he's a proposer <laughs> and I'm seconding it. Yeah, so unless there any other discussion you would like, clarity or... No? Okay, so take a vote on that one then. It's all in favour. Very good. That's one of the easier efforts. Received the financial report as discussed in the estates committee meeting. Okay, so this is my third time of reading now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Toby. Um, so, uh, at the estates committee meeting before last, we were presented with paper by Emma 
um, which rather scared us because it listed six projects that we um, said we were going to do and essentially there was no, not enough money to do at all. So I was then mandated to work with Emma to try and um, uh, try and solve the problem, which we did, uh, and which was more or less some slight uh, alterations accepted by the following estates meeting. So the estates bit um, is in the pipeline. Um, but then we thought, well, because obviously this was not just about buildings, but it was even more about money. Um, so uh, we then thought, okay, well, um, we don't want to have this situation again. So how best um, to not have it? Um, the thing that um, kind of triggered it was the £50,000, which is hopefully not going to be 50000 now, but anyway, at the time, was going to be £50,000, which kind of came out of the blue for um, the courthouse roof. Now, you're, in the state life towers in an old town, you're always going to get something that comes in from left field that you haven't thought about. It's just... But you want to be dealing with one thing, not six things. So, how do we in future try and mitigate against that sort of scenario um, and um, put ourselves in a position where we can give a considered view as to what we need to do um, and not be making financial decisions under extreme pressure. So, what we have um, proposed is um, the back in front of you, and I think the key to it is something that we've been talking about, well I've been talking about long than most people would get a theory about it anyway, uh, but recently we've been talking about a, a budget for three years. So our view is that when we do next year's budget, we then do budgets for the following two years as best we can. So that when we get these big ticket items, um, we can look at uh, mitigating our problem over three years with some facts in front of us, not just one year, and some vague notion of what we might have to do two years down the road. Um, I think that will also be, um, I'm not spoken to her about this, but I think that will be enormous help to uh, Lisa. Um, our estates is a, a big old ticket to handle and I think if she's um, I think she will be able to plan her work um, more realistically uh, if she can see the bigger picture we've also got to be re more realistic as we've seen already this year when we've been um, um, budgeting or we, we budgeted last year for uh, this year's estate spend um, you know, some 500 quid here and a thousand pounds there uh, suddenly was, was totally inadequate. So we've got to be uh, much more realistic with um, our estates budgeting. Um, something Emma has done in the past is that when we don't, normally what we've done is when we don't spend something in a certain year, it just gets lost if we don't spend it. But Emma has uh, experience of um, setting up a kind of war chest, so we don't spend £10,000 on, uh, on this roof this year, but we know that we might have to spend it next year or the year after, so we put that one run aside in our reserves and not just kind of lose it. Um, any spending proposals that come before Council and indeed committees and we're already doing this in estates in that uh, when Lisa wants to spend any money and comes to us and says well, this is what we need to do she is showing us um, what the budget is and what we've already spent so but I, find, I find that tremendously useful um, 
there was one item that um, was included in the original list, not in Emma's original list, but something I thought about afterwards, which frightened the bejesus out of me, because if you recall, we had um, a, a proposal um, to investigate how we might get some money for the town centre. And we blindly, I know this was all rush, but never mind. We blindly went ahead and said, okay, let's, um, let's get on with it. Now, if we'd have been lucky, and I know lucky or unlucky, we'd have had to find an enormous amount of money. An enormous amount of money. Um, and to be quite frank, when we got the letter that said we weren't going anywhere with that, I was a very relieved person. But that's, that's the sort of thing I'm on about. We went ahead and did that, and the first thing we should have asked ourselves, it's a great idea, where is the money coming from? We might have said it doesn't matter, but at least we would have discussed it, and we would have discussed it, well, we would have discussed it now, with only one year's figures. In future, I'm proposing we'll have three years' figures in front of us when we discuss any sort of project that comes before us. Um, and the final uh, thing is that, um, that I think there should be a financial report of some sort uh, to be on the agenda at every council meeting. Because my aim here is to give councillors as much financial information as we practically can so that everybody can make a, uh, a, con a considered judgment and not be saying, well, I thought it was this, but I didn't have this. I didn't have these figures that have just come out six months later. So I think a financial report of some form, whether it be verbal or in writing, but the sort of thing I'm, I'm talking about is, for example, and I'm, I'm thinking here that Emma should do it, she's the responsible financial officer. Uh, I'm happy with all the accounts. By the way, something's come up and in two years' time, you know, we're going to have to look at this. Now we should start looking at how we can do this in two years' time, or maybe we can't, or we'll have to do something else. But that sort of information so that we are, um, we are forewarned of anything coming out of left field as far as we can be. So that, that was... Um, those are our ideas as to how to mitigate it, what could have been a, a very, very severe problem, um, which I think has turned out to be manageable. Um, but we don't want to be going through the same thing yeah. again. Okay. I think the um, most important thing that uh, uh, Terry has admitted is that <coughs> we were talking about, as you know, the courthouse, the QGH, and the whole. And Terry, Terry and I had a meeting around that. Uh, and I feel, as, as, as uh, being on the Finance Committee, uh, uh, sorry, the Estates Committee as Chair, I feel we should have a subcommittee dealing with those three subjects fairly urgently to get the thing sorted out so that we know what we're going to do in the future with those, those three subjects. I know the hub is probably not for... Uh, closing down. Well, uh, just on, you know, but I think we should have a, just a, uh, a, a small committee that can report to the states and to the finance committee about where we go with those three subjects because they are, as Terry says, very stressful on finance all the time and it's got to be looked at and in on the states. Yep. Okay. Be careful with QBH because. That is a trust. Yeah, I you must that. keep that separate yeah, from that. our town council. Yeah. When you say a committee, wouldn't you better have a working party? Then we can have Sorry, staff. a working party. Yes, yeah. we have the staff involved yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I meant working party. I don't. Fortunately, I'm, I'm not sort of a council-oriented mind. I think of things as just being a committee or something yeah. like that. The working party is much better at times. Mm -hmm. okay. So just. just I'm not sure to get the conversation down, just a couple of clarities then. First one is the one that Emma raised there. 
we, we, are, we are treading into more complicated territory. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I think we need, yeah. we need three or four people to sit down mm -hmm. and go yeah. through exactly and where the yeah. complications are. And what are, I would like so to do, all understand yeah. it. what I would also like to do then, for the sake of that committee, that, that working group, is specifically give them the QBH and courthouse to look at. The oh, hub yeah. is a, a major loss to us at the moment. But we all know that we could you know, stop the hub losses tomorrow by closing the hub. Mm -hmm. The other two, we haven't got those sort of options yeah. with. So the hub is a day-to-day -day thing and we're moving on with it. But QVH and uh, the courthouse, and it's not a conversation about do we sell them or do we not sell them. It is a conversation about what is their uh, medium to long-term future with Angel Town Council. I, I totally yeah. agree. I mean, obviously, uh, there are certain ways that we have to deal with this but I think the important thing with both the, both the courthouse and the QBA is that we must sit down and totally understand the underlying situation before and then present it to either the finance committee as we could do tonight or to full council so that we have a total picture of the way that the, the working part of things we should go forward. Like the, like the discussion rotate then? I'm very happy with what's proposed in terms of what Councillor Stanton was saying earlier. Um, it's not quite reinventing the wheel, but we've certainly been in some of those areas before with contingency budgets and more realistic repairs and maintenance budgets. And, uh, I think we've <coughs> in that. I am a little bit more apprehensive about the idea of setting up a very small working party to look at something, in a sense, as fundamental as both the future of the courthouse and separately the future of the QVH. Um, there may have to be decisions of policy, but frankly, if they're decisions of policy, they should be taken in full council. And I don't see any reason why the issues that arise in relation to these two things can't come forward respectively from the existing structures. We already have an estates committee which can tell us about the state and condition of the building and its potential future repair costs, etc. And we have a finance committee which can look at the financial implications of it. And between the two of them, they can report to council of just creating an extra structure. Sadly to me, A seems a bit unnecessary. And B, there is a, a, a risk that it will give an artificial impetus to a direction that may actually not have the support of the majority of the council. Um, so I certainly don't think that it would be something I would support. I think if we were going to go down that route, it ought to be a decision of full council. But, um, I don't think we should be setting up a working party to look at those things. I think we should do it within our existing structures. And if we put in place what Councillor Stagg is suggesting, certainly in terms of the kind of repair and maintenance costs of those buildings, we'll be better placed than we arguably have been uh, to make decisions. Why does the decisions about you know, the marketing of these facilities well, we've also got a, a working party that's supposed to be looking at that as well. So, <laughs> it, it seems to me all we're just going to do is end up having more structures talking about precisely the same things we're talking about anyway. Okay, any other input? Yes, yes. I, I think you're talking about what we've had in the past, aren't you? Kind of three year plans. Is that well, it's, it's we've four had three-year plans since I was but, a yeah, but we used to. We've talked about the years. Yeah, we have had three-year plans over the years, which mm -hmm. is what you're referring to. Yeah. Well, partially that. And so I'm in favour of three-year plans. Yeah. 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 So just on the, uh, the, the, the issue there that you raised on the, uh, the QBH and the, uh, the courthouse, it's the fact that the QBH is costing us so much money at the moment in the repayment of its loan and so on, and we're in this complication now of you know, what is Annual Town Council and what is QBH trustees. You know, uh, wherever it ends up, it's, uh, it's Annual uh, preset payers that are paying it. 
you know, so you know, we've got we've got to make sure we go through the protocols correctly. Um, but uh, we've talked since I've arrived on the council about marketing of, of QVH and marketing opportunities, and you know, not a lot has changed. I mean, unfortunately, the building is quite constrained on what it can do. You know, primarily because of its lack of car parking around it, you know, because you can't let it out for many of the functions that would want car parking. Um, and then, you know, as we found with ourselves, you know, that we've been using other facilities for town meetings because they lend themselves. I'm happy to. How many times has the marketing committee met? The marketing committee, to my knowledge, have not met, no. you know, since the, no. in, in well, this, this year. Well, but isn't that yeah. a proper part of the problem? But it is part of the problem. But also, we, we went to the whole of the last calendar year. You know, sorry, the, the, the sorry. Ca ca <coughs> we went through the whole of the last council year yes. you know, with marketing and you know, reviewed what we could do with the place. And we kept coming around this same same loop. So Emma's done some tremendous work on getting people there on, on some of the Saturdays. And we've got various you know, piecemeal um, things in there. But whenever you look at the finances, you know, we're still only just about covering the cleaning costs on the building. Mm. You know, so we, you know, you'd say with the best will in the world, if you market it to you know, sort of 60% occupancy, you know, you're still going to get nowhere near break even on the building. Mm. Now, I don't say in this discussion that we should say yay or no to one thing or another. But what I do uh, would like us to do is look at the, you know, those two properties and you know, get your firm basis for them and say this is why we're going forward with the way that we are. And part of the reason for me being keen on doing this is because with my other hat on as, as chair of the museum trustees, you know, I'm looking for a long-term relationship with the museum of the town. And that relationship, you know, if the museum say in its current business, commit the town council to maintaining that business, that, that building for 20 years. Uh, 21 years. So, you know, as a trustee of the museum, I want to get this, this issue resolved. And, you know, I don't want it continuously kicked down the road. So I wanted to go in there and, you know, uh, as Council Chapel said, it's a full council discussion. But I want the facts put to the full council of this is what we're committing to for the long term. As I'm sure, you know, happened in the past when we took out the loan on QVH to do the the, uh, the, the refurbishment of it, you know, it was a commitment to the next 25 years or whatever the mortgage is. You know, we're doing the same thing now. We want a commitment to the long-term future that we are or are not keeping these two buildings. And if we are, you know, this is what it's going to cost and this is what the town's going to invest in them. The other thing, just before I finish on this subject, is I'm extremely sensitive about is our current tenants in the courthouse that it will not be long before they know we've been having these conversations. And you know, I would not like them to get the wrong, the wrong mm. message from it. It is a problem that we need to resolve, and we need to resolve it extremely quickly. And therefore, I think that a small working party, not so much to make decisions, but to present to the full council the facts, you know, I think would be one of the most expedient ways of, of progressing it. Sorry, longer speech than I intended. Yeah, one of the things that I, I would like to sort of look at and read and digest properly is actually the loan documentation for the QBH because I, I keep hearing different things about that loan application and what it entails, whether there's an early redemption figure or whatever, and I don't know, and I'd like to know exactly what that loan is about, how it's structured, and, and whether there is an early redemption figure on it, or whether those, I'd like to have those details to hand, and at the moment, uh, I haven't got them, and I'd like to sit, be able to sit down and read that. It's, it's that sort of thing that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in what we do with QVH or what we do with the courthouse, but until we have the details of where we are, we can't, I don't think, do anything about anything anyway. And we're all trustees of the QBH anyway, as best councillors, aren't we? So it isn't sort of something that we're not trustees of. It's just a matter of, of being able to sit down and read and understand where we are today so that we can hopefully become 
more structured in the future with a three year plan, which is what we need to do. Isn't that what the work is going to do? Well, that's, that's, what, that's what I wanted yeah. to do. That's what I wanted to do, Malcolm. This is one way of thinking, because I've got some things that I want to say. I mean, my understanding is that we were going to bring forward the QVH meeting to the next full council meeting and have it in two weeks' time. Yeah. Uh, it would certainly be possible for the finance officer to do us a very short paper because it wouldn't take very long uh, about how much longer there is on the loan to go, what's outstanding, how much we cover it <coughs> pay per year, and deal with the point about whether there is any kind of early redemption by the penalty or advantage. I would have thought come out. If we could probably have with us, if we really pushed it you know, within a day or two, let alone in time for the next meeting. So I'm sure that we could have that. I won't be here, so I'd like to appreciate if you send yeah. it to me anyway. Well, when it, go, when it goes out, it can go out to yeah. everybody. It's an email, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's December 58. I'm afraid I'm, I'm busy. Guess what? Just, just a very, very quick one. I think this discussion is very, very important. And I am. I hate layers of bureaucracy, and so that's the working part of things that I've, I've, I fully agree with Councillor Chadwick about that. Uh, but having the three-year plan and everything else will make it very, very much easier for us when we come to the annual town meeting, because we did have some difficult questions. Not difficult, but we were pondering mm -hmm. how do we answer this from the public at that particular time, from the townspeople. If we have a plan, if we have a structure, if we have everything happening, it's going to make that event very, very much easier for us, and it will make it yeah. understandable for everybody. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and, that. and you can highlight things that we plan to do next year or the year after. This is what we're doing, not what we've done. <laughs> everybody knows what we've done. I don't be happy with it, but you know that. If I'm in the audience, I want to know what you people are going to do for this town. <clears throat> Uh, can I say? Certainly. Uh, first of all, it, I've just read it several times and it's not very clear. When I suggested a special forum, in my mind I was thinking about uh, an extraordinary council meeting so that everybody was involved in these big discussions. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. The only problem I have with subcommittees um, is that they're only as good as the person who's chairing it, who's driving it. Because if it's not driven, it'll drift. Mm. Because there's no date for it to come back here and be reported on. Yeah, so that's why I'm very keen on, on pace on this one. Yeah, because I'm seeing the museum is sitting there waiting for us you know, to get off the pot with it. So that's answered my question. You're going to drive it now? I don't know, but... <laughs> Um, what, I, what I would like, if we're going to have a full council discussion on the subject, I would like the full council to be informed of the issues, yeah, which is not just the loan of QVH, but it's the issues of what, what we're committing the town to for the future. And you know, the, 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 the councillors deserve that, that sort of information. Can I just check that, that you use the words about when it gets out? The museum will hear about it. No, it's not the museum so much as the tenants of the courthouse. Oh, yeah, right. the museum are already aware that we haven't answered their question. Right. Yeah, we haven't answered the question That's because right. of this this issue. But the other tenants, I'm sure, they are aware that we're talking about this now. And oh, therefore, of selling the courthouse. Is that well, we're not talk, we're not talking we're about? not talking about selling the courthouse. We're talking about its future. Yeah. But what, what I'm saying is that we need, we can't leave this to fester for six months or anything like that. You know, it needs to, need some pace to it. So what I would like if we bring it up at the next council, full council meeting, at that meeting that we present to the full council some good data, you know, which is more than just the loan on QBH, it's what the incomes are looking like. And, you know, that we, I think we were lucky at the last old town meeting, you know, when Jerry put forward to the town about the continuation of the, you know, the, the, the funding that we were putting into QBH, and there was no, no question back from it. But I know, you know, when we had the meeting, the discussion in this room about precept triangle, you know, there was a lot of pressure from certain parties to reduce the precept. And my concern with that is that whenever you reduce the precept, you take off the thing that people can see. Yeah, which is the re refurbishment of parks and these, these things that people are engaged with. They can't see that this heavy base load that we've got for these big, big repayments. 
So I would like the full council to, to be able to see that, that data in its simple format, not in the complexity that sometimes we present here. Yes, that full council response. meeting is next week. Uh, now, yeah. Um, are we going to be making a decision next week? No, or no. no we're not going to make a decision. It will be a first meeting of yeah. several meetings. Of the, the issue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So personally, I would like it to to be completed in three months. Right. Yeah. I think you know there's a lot of work to do in three months, but that's, that's I, I feel that is. is a realistic target. Yeah. But, but we've got three months, and then you know. Yeah, essentially, tomorrow I can go to the, the you know, to the uh, to the uh, museum trustees and tell them, you know, the council is looking at being able to answer their question about the long term lease, you know, by you know, Christmas, isn't it? One other issue I've got uh, on on the document and what I hadn't noticed it the first time I read it, you put the financial report into every council meeting. Do you mean every full council meeting? Yes. yes. Right, okay. It's yeah. all right. I just meant, you know, the way it reads, it said every council meeting. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's every full council yes. meeting. Yes. Yeah. All right. That, when, when I first read it with you, that's all I read, yeah. but because I tend to read past the words, you know, and, and right. stick in words that I think ought to be there. But yeah, so it's every full council meeting. And that's a report, it's not a discussion. Uh, in my Unless, mind, um, We've not talked about how this will be formatted, but in, in my mind, it's a report. Um, if you go back to olden times, which I love to do very often, but never mind, you used to have one councillor reporting to reporting on finance. Councillor Chapel, yeah. before me, used to give a, I don't know, a minute saying I'm happy with this, la -di -la -di -la. is everybody else happy? I, I can sign up So i am sign up no, for a minute. we don't want a big bundle of papers. No, that's fine, that's fine. As long as Basically, we... fair responsible finance yeah. officer is happy. Yeah, that's what, that's happy. what we talked about, yeah. yeah. So it was the, con the concept that you know, Emma, Emma has the, 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 the ship to run, yeah, and you know, we, we only took four pointed icebergs. Yeah. So one, one minute, unless there's something yeah. you know, that you want to raise, that's fine. Because you know we do have the, 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 the ability to go over everything yet every solid month, don't we? We're not careful. And say the same things. Yeah. All right. Um, right. So it said to receive the financial report and then approve, approve the and approve approve that yeah. that yeah. document. Yeah. <coughs> So, is everybody happy to approve the document? I yeah. suppose we're going to approve it. We need to insert a figure where the question mark is. <laughs> yes. Um, um, does Councillor Stag have a figure in mind? No. <laughs> 5,000? I've, I've got 10 in mind, but uh, you know, it's, it's inflation. But, um, oh. uh, I mean, just on the, the rules of the game, isn't, isn't there a figure at which we have to bring things back anyway? 2,000, isn't it? Handing over yeah. 2,000 from the committee comes to full council. I'd vote for two. Well, it, 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 exactly, it ought to be in alignment in line, with the yeah. other document, yeah. yeah. Not Probably. second two. Yeah. <laughs> so 10, 5, 10. Right now, I'm happy to with two. I can Not see the logic. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. And the, uh, the, the other one that needs, it's every four council meeting on, the, um, yeah. on that last point. Okay, right. Well, I'm happy to propose that. Is, uh, do we have a second? Councillor Snag, do you want a second? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. All, of it, you know. <laughs> All those in favour? Thank you. Thank you, Terry. There was a good chunk of work there. Well, Emma, Court, and Lisa all contributed. Yeah. But you, you, you simmered over it for nearly six months and then <laughs> it blew. <laughs> yeah, great. Right, next one approves the uh, new financial regulations. Mm -hmm. We should all have this and then. Um, the insomnia ones. And this you'll is, see uh, yes. the <laughs> items in red which are in line with our current financial <coughs> regulations. Yeah. If you want to be pretty open, the back 
and white crystal. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's not much in red, actually. It might look a bit grey. Yeah. Red and so grey. If you want to speak to that, there's, there's one saying that Emma is, is the uh, responsible financial officer. And then it to this one. Mm -hmm. In that case, we'll vote on it without a problem. Um, one of the differences um, that I've included, just to be in line with that, um, the document we've just approved, mm. is we've normally only ever an had an annual um, one, one, estimates, yeah, okay. but I've included the three-year forecast for every committee. Mm. Yeah. All right. Here, um, in the in the heading of it. Um, I mean, it's obviously financial regulations 2019 for. England, but Amble Town Council Financial Regulations 2019 for England doesn't sound right somehow. We shouldn't have the for England there. There are Amble Town Council well. Financial Regulations. Mm -hmm. it, that's that's how it was how it was presented. Yes. Yeah. Square brackets for you to put your your town council or parish right. council in along with what was next. So oh, it just the, differentiates from yeah. Wales. A lot of the, the charities and commission stuff has, has a similar wording where um, you have to say, because um, I've just done one for the museum, um, it's for it's for England uh, as opposed to for Wales. Yeah, that, um, that's what this is because yeah, Wales is different. Yeah, but having having now adopted it for Ambletown Council, I don't think we need the for England in there. I just. Are your financial regulations? Yeah. You can put what you like. <laughs> <laughs> I see where they come from. I think you would see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, could be removed, yeah. Yeah, okay. We won't do the Welsh one. Right. <laughs> so I, I just thought it was one of the guys on Chapel's things with no commas in it. it was, <laughs> no, I, I can take no responsible committee for this on the basis that we now draft these standard model ones and we just keep it. Just, yeah. I, was thinking, I haven't had the chance to look through this yet. I'm sure. Um, you're trying to think. Um, job with it. It. I, can, I can now work out where the changes are because you're right, it does look slightly different. There's a little bit more about how we make our payments because that's changed slightly. Um, and then point eight eight point three, it talks about um, the chairman or uh, in our case mayor receiving a, co a a hard copy of the bank statements, but that hasn't happened for many years. So I, I just wonder whether you're okay with yeah. me to remove that. Yeah. I mean, we have a hard copy here. If, if anybody yeah. wants to have a look at yeah. it. Isn't there a regulation about that to be a hard copy system? Yeah, it, it's, in the, it's in the financial regulations, yeah. but it's not one of the ones that you must have. Yeah. But I don't think um, the Mayor has received a hard copy in the post of the bank statements for some considerable time. Well, not since I've been here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like I say, we have a hard copy here for anybody to have a look at. Yeah. In 6.21, it goes through a text, and then with the word or in big capital letters, and then it goes straight into 7, which suggests that the or shouldn't be there, because there isn't an or anything. Presumably that was a, an alternative one we could have had. Cut and paste. 6.2. Oh, right. That's right. Oh, right. <laughs> it just sits there in sort of limbo. Yeah. So it's just, it's yeah, just I need to check that because I don't know whether that means. Well, presumably there was a second, there was an alternative yeah. wording that we don't use, but I would have thought the all should. I don't. I wouldn't have admitted it. I would have left it there and said we don't need this. So yeah. I don't. I'll have to check okay. that. It certainly doesn't make sense to just have an all without anything following it. Yeah. So just one thing I noticed as I was going through there, and, and you with your two hats on. We have a responsible financial officer That's me. and a financial officer. Right, okay, so there's a responsible one and the other one is. Don't go there. No, it was, it was only because you had the clerk, in one of the sentences here, the clerk and the responsible financial officer. Oh, the same. So that's the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but the fi financial officer is different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fine. <sighs> 
Told you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I was a good form. Yeah, you want to read this. I'll, I'll just check what that all was, because I don't remember taking it. Uh, the only other thing is, I think if it relate, if it if that's with cash, I think it um, may be something to do with petty cash, which is not something that we have. So it might be. But I will check that. No, I no. mean, you know, it, it is something that we can refer back to if, if, if we need to, if right. we want to change something. So we're all happy to approve that? Mm -hmm. We need a proposal? Council Appeal? Are you wanting a proposal? Sorry? Yeah, we've already got to approve it. Yeah, so we're looking for proposals, we've got to take the bill, and that's seconded. Council is back. And all those in favour? Right. I will remove the board and yeah, check the board as well. Yes, exactly. Right, to receive the external auditor report. Again, I have to go backwards and forwards over reading this, but I've got it in the end. It's not on the original one, I just then copied it. Okay. The original one has got to full counts. So the auditor had a few things he wanted us to do this time, wasn't it? Was that yeah, it was. Right? Yeah. Amending the figures in boxes five and six. Yeah. Which that I've restated those on on the copy, but yeah, the original one that. will the original one will be at full council because yeah. that's where we'll actually form the approved yeah. Yeah. So well, we've done do everything we wanted to do just to do it. Yes, yeah. yeah, that that's it. Just basically changing the yeah. figures. Yeah. Well, 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 do we understand why we went like wrong? Is it, is it like to change something, or is it the technicality? And there's a technicality oh, because okay. I've yeah. That's what it looks like normally. I've discussed you know. it with them before yeah. and they've decided they've told me where they want the capital to go to. Yes. And I've done what they've told me to do. And they've told me that it isn't right. No, yeah. And yeah. yeah. then you go yeah. back and say that you said these things. Yeah. Which has been the first time that we've seen the goalposts moved and be told that a practice that we did what they told us to do, <laughs> we shouldn't be doing. So yeah. Yeah. I don't think the um, Financial position do them anyway. No, exactly. You can put that down to the ENC. They're always having us do the right thing, then change them all the time. The accounts of the EU haven't been signed up in many decades. So other than that, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so we so have to go to the full council. Right? Yeah. Do we have to approve this here? No. No, okay. Right. Just receive it and know what we'll the Approve the actions, yeah. yeah. So, okay. right. right. So then I read out, please note, in view of the special and confidential nature of the business about to be transacted, it's advisable the public interest that the public have be temporarily excluded and they are instructed to withdraw. Okay. Okay. Sorry? You need to vote on that, yeah. do you? Mm -hmm. You can take a vote on that. Vote, second, all in favour. Right. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I no object. Oh, you're objecting this time. I always object. Oh, you're abstaining. You do one object. Okay. Right. And therefore, we've, we've received the two documents. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. So, any other item for report only? Yes, can't it be, uh, this is not nothing to do with finance, it's just to say, as I won't be here at the next council meeting, uh, on the 17th of November, the Christmas tree has been erected in the town centre. Uh, I've arranged with Jenny uh, for basically 20 to 25 footer. Uh, we've talked about the base not being too wide this time because there were a few uh, issues with it last time. Uh, and so, I'm looking obviously for volunteers. You came last year, didn't you? Yeah. 
just to, from eight, half past eight on the Sunday morning, just to come along and stop the traffic parking in the area around uh, where the tree has gone. You know, that sort of slip road there. Yeah. Just yeah. November. 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 17. 17. 17. 17. Which is a slip road. Yeah. And it's just literally to stop the traffic and help in any way we can to get uh, the tree up. John, I've got to talk to John when he comes just, just to get some more wedges. Yeah. They, they took a lot with them last year, but I think if we have another four or five, okay. just to make sure. Uh, and then that's it. Unfortunately, I was hoping to get it done the Sunday after, because the lights are going up that week. Yeah. They're, they can't go away, so they have to do it on the 17th. Right. And just in terms of remembrances the previous stuff that uh, Sunday, so it's not going to... to, to, to no, I wouldn't, wouldn't want him erecting a sudden tree in the middle of the No, can you sit in the middle, middle of that? Yeah. Peter, we, go, we really have to thank the, uh, the organisation again and yourself for doing this. What? Yeah. The tree. Mm. I didn't think I'd be doing it this year, to be honest. No, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it is a tremendous thing, you know, if we, you know, like all, all the things we've managed. Well, listen, it's not me you should be thanking. It should be... Uh, well, you're the one that's actually organised this, so yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could I also ask uh, that you make sure the guys that are helping you have high-vis vests? Well, yeah, but obviously... Yeah. We've got lots here. So. Yeah, but could you make sure you have them? I've um, got... I've got I, them just them. under this, I don't know whether I can mention the lady who tripped. Um, perhaps. No. The only, the only well, actually, thing is, let, me, let me report in general terms then, there has been an accident on our property yes, in the town mm -hmm. and somebody has been hurt quite seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a reminder about safety in the, in the town. You know, and it's our responsibility, obviously, as councillors, to act in a safe manner and therefore high vis vests mm -hmm. for what you're doing. I shall make sure that I have four or five in the back of my boot. It would be, it would be uh, uh, a good idea to put that in the email as well. So yeah. it's actually down in writing. I um, know what you said to everybody that I think you should wear and yep. have appropriate footwear as well. Mm. So we're covered. Boots. Yeah. yeah. And make sure the fairy lights are pats tested. I know. That's, so that's obviously yeah. that's something else. But we have we have changed the way the, the lights are going on the trees this year because Jenny wasn't very happy about the lights last year because it did look really awful. It looked like a girl. <laughs> Yeah, it's an architectural ma masterpiece in London. Um, it was a okay. small version. Sorry, yeah. item of any other business? Uh, yes. Uh, Stack. Unless I missed it, it's the first time I've ever been to the Tower of London. Oh, Okay. And the QBA yeah, so what we did discuss is it, it was coming back to the full council here that we were going to have a look at you know, the, the, the maximum information for next week's meeting and then we've got from next week we'll work out how in detail we okay. go forward you know, but I'm keen that we've got this deadline of three months to get it all wrapped up okay. Anything else? Well, thank you very much it was a very good meeting yeah. Thank you Andy.